everyone, Jillian Pocalo here, um, and I'm here to show you how to do block printing. So if you've never block printed before, or if you're a pro, um, hopefully you can find some interesting uh, tips for how to make your block prints. Now, um, by day, I am an elementary art teacher. By night, I teach adult printmaking at community art centers. And I have to say that it doesn't matter what age you are, um, everybody loves block printing. And as soon as you can kind of see how to do it, it's such a relaxing way to bring printmaking into your life. And um, so I just want to show you how. So to start, um, Speedball has a great line of all different kinds of blocks that you can use. Uh, so these are, and they all have different purposes. And the thing about art and printmaking is there's so many different ways to do it. And there are so many different options. Um, and that's good because there's so many different artists. So um, so what this is, is these are mounted um, battleship gray linoleum, and this is what it looks like if it's unmounted. Um, and all of these have their own purpose, and all of these have their sort of limitations or their own language. So for the battleship gray linoleum, um, this one is an unmounted one. Um, and so what I was doing was this is part of a four color print that I made a while ago and um, it's a little bit harder to cut into if you did printmaking back in the 90s in art class you probably used this um, I wanted to show you my block that I made back in the 90s in um, Miss Douglas's seventh grade art class uh, and I know it's somewhere around here I just can't find it but anyway um, so to to cut into this it's a little bit harder it's a really good hand workout um, so here are some tr tips if you are going to use this. Now the, the benefit of using the Battleship Gray is that you can get it in really big sheets. It's really inexpensive. Um, and, and so you can go really big with this. Um, the, the limitation is it's a little harder to carve, like I said. So some people will stick this in the microwave or if they have a heat plate, they'll stick it on top of a heat plate. When I was carving this, I had a, um, a heat pad. Um, and so I was just laying this down on my lap with the heat pad and then I had this on top and was able to carve it pretty easily. So that was a nice little fun, relaxing uh, way to do that. Um, now I also use the mounted linoleum um, a lot of times when I'm working on my press, which you see right behind me. So this press behind me is a Chandler and, Pre Chandler and Price uh, proof press from the 1860s. And I'm going to pull a print on that just to show you. But what's nice about these blocks is they're just about type high. So like they're just a little bit smaller than the, um, the shorter than um, the type that you would use for letterpress. So I'll oftentimes use one of these with a little bit of packing underneath of it to when I'm doing letterpress prints. So this is a really great way to incorporate your own imagery in addition to using um, type. And then we've got um, these blocks that are sort of like good, better, best, although everything works really well. Uh, so this is the Speedy Cut. And when I was first starting out, I used the Speedy Cut a lot because it was a really affordable option and it holds up really well. So this block is probably about 15 years old at this point. That still holds up really well. Um, one of the things to note is that when you're carving this, if you go too deep, sometimes little pieces can chip off. So, I mean, it works really well, but it's just one of those things that like everything's got its own language, everything's got its own limitation. So there's that. Um, then there's the Speedy Cut Easy, which is great for if you're just kind of like launching into printmaking and you want to have something that's really easy to carve that's not going to chip. That's a really good option. And I don't know if there's so much sunlight coming through my window at this time of day, which I love, but it's also making the colors a little bit difficult to see. So this is blue. Um, and then this is the, um, the Speedy Carve. And that's what I'm going to do a demo on today because I really, really love the surface of this. It cuts super easy. It feels really good. So, um, so that's that. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to transfer an image onto a print block. So I've got this print block going on right here. I'm just going to adjust this so you're not seeing my face. You're seeing my hands more. Okay. So I've got this print block that I'm, I'm going to be working on today. Um, and so there's a lot of different ways to transfer your image. One way that I usually will use is I will usually um, 
like my work is a lot of photo based uh, imagery. So what I'll do is I'll print out a black and white photo and then I trace over it using um, using graphite and I'll do a graphite transfer. So what I do with that is I'm just going to lay, the, I've traced over this, you can kind of see the sheen. I've traced over all of it with pencil, kind of like I'm coloring it in with pencil. So then I'm just going to go here on the block and this is our linoleum cutting tool. I'm going to show you how this is used in a minute, but one of the nice things is this rounded edge can be a burnisher. So I can just kind of go like that. And you can see how it transfers really, really nicely. Let me pull this closer to you so you can see. You can see how that transfers really nicely. Okay. Um, another way to do it, there's always an easier way, right? Another way to do it is, and I just got hip to this, so you and I are gonna experiment together. You can take a new copy of an image and you can apparently do a heat transfer. So you and I are gonna to learn together here. So what I've got is a warm iron, it's on the lowest setting, and I've got my paper. And I'm just gonna try and move this around. I don't wanna get it to bubble up, I don't want it to melt the plastic, but I do wanna try and transfer this so that I can see the imagery on the block. So again, it's a really low, low print. Ooh, this is going really nicely, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Now you can also do, I mean, here's the thing. You can also do transfers in another way too. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, a little more up top. Um, if you have a laser print, you can also do a transfer where you are um, taking, oh, this is cool. Okay. So you can see how I'm checking it and moving it slowly. And if anything, like rather than just ripping it up, I want to see if I can get the whole thing. Um, you can also do transfers by taking, um, uh, I'll tell you, this is really efficient. This might totally revolutionize how I work with in my studio, guys. Um, let's complete that sentence, shall we, Jillian? You can also take a new laser print and um, do a Xerox transfer using wintergreen oil if you don't feel like having, if you feel like having your house smell like Ben Gay for a while, or you can use um, nail polish remover, but if you're going to do that, make sure you're using a laser print and make sure that you have gloves on because it's like sending some, it's not terribly non-toxic, but it is a really efficient way to get a transfer. You can also use the blending uh, markers uh, if you have alcohol markers. So there's a lot of different ways to, tr to do a transfer. Okay, so this is really cool. This is blowing my mind right now. So I want you to see. It really, let me see if I can pull this over a little bit. So it really did transfer very nicely. I can see my image. And here's the thing that's most important is whatever transfer technique you use, um, so long as you can see your imagery, that's really all that matters. Um, so, you know, I know what I'm gonna be carving away now. So in this image, the areas that I'm going to carve away are going to be the white areas of where you can see the paper, um, or in other words, where you can see the pink. The stuff that I'm going to leave behind is where the Xerox was able to transfer, where the black ink is. So I so that's but. Um, again, every artist is different. You may decide that you want a black background with white line work, and this is where your artistic sentiment comes in and you get to make some choices. All right, so let's talk about cutting. So this is um, a Speedball linoleum cutter. Love this thing. Um, and what's really nice is there's a little compartment that can screw off, so then you have all of your blades right in there. It's great. Um, so I don't lose blades. All right. 
And so all of the blades come with different numbers and they all do different things. So this is a number six blade, which is more like for cutting a shape out. So um, I use the number six blade, it's kind of like an X-Acto. Um, I have a big pile of stuff here that I wanted to show you. And only so much room on my little work table. Here we go. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut out a block so that I have a shape that I can use for stamping and printing. So you can use the number six for that to get out a, get a good shape. Um, and then they kind of go up. So your number one is going to be your thinnest um, V. And so I'm going to show you what I do with that in a moment. So you can kind of see it's a really small V. Number two is kind of a good all-purpose. Like I tell my students that if you if you have only enough money to buy one blade, this is probably the one to get because it's it's pretty versatile. Then they go up to a number three, which is good for cutting out larger areas, and a number four, and a number five, and then they just get bigger as you go. All right, so this is number five. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't show you a number because for whatever reason I don't have one in here that's okay um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to cut away my block um, now my personal preference for doing this is I usually will start with a number one blade and I'll do all of my detail cutting this way um, and then I'll sort of gradually move up so I'll do like my my small line work here with the number one and then I'll gradually get bigger as I'm trying to clear away more stuff. So um, I'm going to put this in here. So this is how this works. Um, you're going to loosen up the bolt. And if you can look in there, see how there's a little wiggly piece? There's a tiny little plate in there that is going to slide over a little bit. And then you just drop that in and tighten it up. Now I want to show, I'm going to take it apart because you can't break this thing. Um, you really can't break this thing. Um, to show you the inner workings of this so you know like if something got stuck or if you couldn't figure it out or ah, you can, there, this, is, this is an easy way to do this. So if you loosen this up all the way, here's what you got going on in here. So there's the big nut. And then there's this little plate. <laughs> there's this little plate. And that little plate is where this rounded edge is going to fit into. So in other words, when it's inside your handle, it looks like that. Okay. So um, I'm going to fix that and put everything back together again. I'm going to put my number one blade in. All right. So I'm going to find that little wiggly plate, drop that in, twist this up, and then I got it. Okay. Now, um, main rule of block carving is to cut away from yourself. It's obvious, but it's not obvious. I can't tell you how many times I see people carving like this, and, and let me tell you and how many times I've carved like that too, and it hurts when you cut into yourself. So the best thing you can do is to cut away from yourself. One of the things I usually will tell my students who are just starting out in block carving is I'll tell them to hold it like a pencil, right? Kind of like you would normally hold a pencil, and then take your other hand, just so that it doesn't wind up getting in your way, take your other hand and you're kind of steering it with your thumb. That's kind of a good way I think of it. And especially if you're working on something that's more like, um, if you're working on one of the these linoleum blocks, the Battleship Gray linoleum blocks that are gonna give you more resistance when you're cutting, it really does help to have both hands behind the blade like that and to steer, because you're gonna need that extra power and you're gonna need that extra push. Um, because safety first, you can always use a bench hook to help you carve and then that way this thing is going to keep it locked in place so it's not going to go shooting across your table and um, then there's that. All right, Now you don't need to carve really deep um, so like I said I'm going to carve away the, the 
areas that don't have my Xerox transfer on them, I'm gonna cut away the pink areas. So what I might do is if I'm trying to get like this section here, this little line right here, um, what I'll usually do is I'll go on one side of that line right against the Xerox. Okay. And like that. Um, and then I will cut like this. So you can see how I'm using my thumb to kind of guide my tool. And let me tell you, there are a few things in this world that are quite as relaxing to me as sitting and carving a block. Um, it's meditative, it's satisfying, um, especially with everything that's going on in the world. It's really a great way to calm down and center. Okay. I'm not gonna do the whole thing um, on live video um, because I don't want to bore you and there's a lot of other stuff to be done and I can see that this is gonna take me a little while, which is yay, really fun. Um, but uh, what I will do is I'm gonna switch blades so you can kind of see um, what each one does. So now I'm gonna move up to a number two and I'm gonna clear away these areas right here. And I'm gonna drop that in. I'm gonna find the wiggly piece, tighten that up, and then I'm gonna carve away from myself. Now, okay, here's where, here's where the teacher in me um, differs from the artist in me. Because usually I don't use a bench hook, but you know, safety first, it's always a good idea. Um, what I'll do is I usually kind of keep my hands tucking, like sort of resting on the block. I'm steering, so you can kind of see how I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna steer with my palms of my hands, steer with my thumb, and just kind of go for it. So now I'm going away with the number two, and I'm able to clear away a lot more space this way. And you don't have to dig super deep. Like one of the things I notice with a lot of my st students who are just first starting out is they want to go like deep into it. You're just kind of grazing the surface. You're just taking off the top layer of what's there. You're not trying to go carve through the whole block because um, ink is going to stick to the spots where you have not carved. It's going to stick to the highest point. So you really don't need to carve into it too deep. And in fact, I would suggest not doing it too deep um, because um, you don't wanna hurt the structural integrity of your block and then have it chipping and falling apart while you're trying to make a whole ton of prints. So um, I, have, I realized I have this one sitting here and I can show you with this one that might be a little easier to see because um, it's not as detailed. So for this one, I wrote the most amazing magical words ever. Make prints, and I hope that you do, and I hope you make a lot of them. Um, so again, what I'll do is I'll start by, I'm just gonna do one letter just to kind of show you what it's all about. So wiggly plate, tighten it up. I know some artists will usually have like a bunch of cutters and then they have them lined up with all of their different blades so they don't have to worry about switching them in and out. Um, I use one as my like best friend blade and I just, you know, I just, I'm switching blades. Um, and it, for me, it's kind of a nice like, like pacing of myself while I'm working. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the K. Uh, so I'm gonna start by doing that line work around the K. And you can move your block really easily. Um, all of these blocks come in different sizes. So depending on what you're trying to do, 
um, depending on what size you're trying to, to carve. There's there's not a really like right or wrong way. Um, there's not a right or wrong size, except, you know, dependent upon your own artwork. Um, cards are usually between like three by, they're usually like three by five or four by six or something standard like that. And um, the block I was just working on was uh, four by six. Um, but you know, whatever, whatever project you're doing, you can get a, there's a block for that. I'm going to drop in another, my number two, just so you can kind of see, um, how that works. So I'm going to carve away a little bit more around that letter K. And you don't have to try and get it all in one pass either. Like a, um, one of the really great things about block printing is that it has an expressive line. So I, I like to think that each printmaking process has its own language that we can listen to. And nothing gives you a photograph quite like um, a screen print. Nothing gives you a line quite like an etching. Nothing gives you a range of shading and tone quite like a litho lithograph. And nothing gives you an expressive dynamic line quite like a lino cut. So um, each of these have their own, own language. And so you can use that to your advantage when you're cutting out a lino cut. Um, you may, like even if you're clearing away a lot of this, you may wind up um, getting some really expressive lines and in this one I kind of had fun with it so like I, I usually will have lines that sort of follow the form and in this case you can see how those lines are radiating out and they some of them actually print even though they've been carved away um, and I use that to my advantage all right so um, so let's pretend that you hung out with me for a really, really long time. Oh, one of the most important things I almost forgot to say is whatever you do on here, I'm realizing because it's a mirror image, you're seeing this flipped. In my world, these letters are backwards. Okay, so in my world, looking backwards, the E is like every letter is backwards and every piece of the word is backwards. So um, make sure that whatever letters you have here, if you're carving out stamps or if you're carving out letters, that they look backwards on your printing plate. That's one of those weird technology things that I'm just realizing is happening. So, um, so make sure that your letters look backwards here because then when they print, they're gonna reverse themselves. Um, so the next thing, now I'm going to clean up. Oh, you know what? Actually, hold on. One of the things that I forgot to show you or didn't show you was the difference between, so this is carved out with a number two. Wow. That sun is really coming into my studio and I love it so much. So you can see that this is with a number two. Let me show you the type of line work that a number three can get or a number five can get. We're just going to jump to number five. So I use a number five if I'm trying to clear away like a really big amount of space. So if I'm trying to do, um, let me see, I'm realizing that the sun is wonderful and it's beautiful and it's bright and it's, I'm so happy it's here, but it's really kind of messing with the way that I show you this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve away a little more to show you how big a spot using the number five is. So I'm trying to clear away a large area. This is, this is my friend. Okay, so you can kind of see the difference there between a uh, number one, a number two, and a number five. 
So yeah, so just remember if you're cutting away letters, they should look backwards on your printing block that um, my screen is my a mirror image, right? So it's looking forward for you, but for me, it's looking backwards on my printing block. That's really important. Um, all right, so now that I've cut my block and I'm happy with it, the next thing I'm gonna do is, well, I'm gonna clean up my spot a little bit. I'm gonna put all of my blades back here. All right, and then I like to just kind of clean up my spot a little bit. So let's see, my iron that I use to transfer is nice and cool so I can put the cord back. Oop, here's another blade. And what's nice is these, these handles have started to come in different colors too. So, I mean, there's the, the red, which I really like because red's my favorite color, but, um, but it's kind of nice that they also come in lots of other colors too. Um, all right, so now that I've done that, I'm gonna clean up my little plastic pieces, my little linoleum pieces. Um, even though I'm doing a printmaking demo, one thing that I like to do in my classroom and at my house is these little pieces um, would normally just go in the trash. But what I do in my household is we have um, what are called bottle bricks. So we take old plastic bottles and then we um, put all kinds of plastic in there and jam pack it until it becomes a solid mass of just plastic that would normally get thrown out. And, um, and so then I'm saving those to possibly build like a bench or something. Um, and then that way it's just a little less plastic that's getting put out into the world. So it's a fun little tip. All right, so I'm gonna set those aside for now and put them in my bottle brick. Um, so the next thing is the printing part and that's the fun part, right? So um, there are a lot of different options for different printmakers. Um, and so I wanna show you a couple of those options. Now, if you've been tuning into Speedball's uh, videos lately, you'll have seen some amazing videos by uh, Lino Cave, and she uses these inks, um, the fabric inks. You can use the fabric inks on paper, on wood, or whatever, but they're designed for ink or for uh, for fabric, so you can ink up uh, your printing blocks and um, print them onto really any type of natural fabric. Um, and then you would just um, let it sit for, sorry about that. You would just let it sit for a week and, um, and then you can wash them like normal. Um, there's also the block printing inks that are water soluble block printing e inks. Um, I use these in my classroom, um, and they're really great for the person who's just starting out with block printing, and if you've never done it before, this is a really great way to, to use it. All of these are clean up with soap and water, by the way, so there's nothing toxic about this stuff, um, which is really, really great. And with these inks come um, the ink extender. So what happens is these are really great for just paper um, and uh, they dry pretty quickly so it's great for a classroom setting when my students are like really eager to take their stuff home with them after they're done printing. But this will kind of extend the ink so that it doesn't dry on your inking tray. Um, so I'm going to show you these. Then Speedball also has a really another really great um, line of ink. Um, just came out the professional inks and these are what I really really love um, they feel like oil-based inks they're water miscible so you can clean them up with soap and water and they're um, what I like is that they're they're really non like not toxic so I like non I have my studio in my house so all of the stuff that I use in here has to be non-toxic if I'm gonna live with it. So that's kind of my way of uh, um, 
of doing it. All right, so here we go. Let's make some prints. Um, I have been wanting to print this for a while. I finished it up last night. I've been working on it for the past couple of days. Um, it comes from a photo. You saw the, the original photo of it. Um, I'm just really interested in like gates and wrought iron work and all of that stuff. So uh, here we go. So what I've got here is my professional relief ink and I'm going to ink up my, my thing, uh, my block. So I have some, oh, okay. A couple things. So I'm using a glass tabletop in my studio, which is really nice because I can ink it up, clean it off super easy. So when you see me rolling it out on here, this is, there's a piece of glass here. Um, I would not just do that on a regular table. Um, you can use palette paper, you can use a piece of plexiglass, you can use a mirror, you can use a whatever to put down um, to, for cleanup. You can also use your um, bench hook to put ink down. Um, I wanted to just say that for the people who are watching me and are like, not in my house. It's cool. All right, so I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start by putting a glop of ink up at the top. I had this ink sitting for about 10 minutes. And because it's water miscible oil, it can sit for a while and it's fine. So I'm gonna put this up and then I'm gonna start to roll out my ink. And there's a really great sound that I hope you'll be able to hear uh, of the right amount of ink on your brighter. If you hear that, that's the right amount of ink. There's also another thing to look for. Um, so if you look at the briar, and this is where the sunlight might actually be helping me a little bit. If you look at the briar, you see those little micro dots? That's a sign that there's just the right amount of ink on the briar. It's right there, that's a little bit of a uh, thick spot of ink. All right, so what you do not want is for it to look slidey. I'm gonna put too much ink so you can kind of see. All right, so here you can really see. See how that's slidey? That's too much ink, and that's gonna give you a sloppy impression. So you can just kind of roll it out a little bit. You want those micro dots and you want to hear that beautiful, beautiful sound of the right amount of ink. Okay, so now I'm going to ink up my printing plate. Now some people like to use a brayer that is the right size so that you just do it in one pass. Um, and I've got a range of brayers in different sizes, but I, I really like kind of going back and forth a little bit so that I can kind of make sure that it's really inked up nicely. Now here's where you can kind of see, see how there's this area here where the ink was sticking to some of those areas that I cut out. That's that expressive line quality that I'm talking about with block printing that's really fun and you can use it to your advantage. But on the surface of the plate, I can see those little micro dots I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there you can. You can see those little micro dots. So that means that I'm, I'm, I probably have the right amount of ink. Um, the first time you pull a print, expect that it's, especially from a freshly carved block, expect that it's gonna be a little light, expect that it's not gonna print the way that you want it to. So there's gonna be one that's just kind of like your, mm, you did that print. Um, and then you can start printing your edition and you're just gonna keep doing the same thing over and over again. All right, so. I'm using some mulberry paper. I'm gonna put that down right on top. And here's where there's a lot of different ways to make a print. And every printmaker is different. Everybody gets to, um, there, there's a lot of different strategies because we're all different printmakers. Some people take a dry brighter and they will go over it like that. Okay, that's cool. Some people take a baron and then they'll make a print that way. Some people take a spoon. You have all these choices. Personally, for me, I prefer to use my hands. And the reason I prefer to use my hands is because I like the feeling of the block. I like to be able to feel all over the block to make sure that I've gotten it. I, I like to kind of be able to spot treat different areas differently. Um, 
but you know we're all different printmakers um, and especially like if you're using like a really thick paper um, sometimes you can um, you know sometimes I've noticed that if I'm rolling it out or if I'm using a brayer if I'm, or a baron especially if I'm using really really thick paper it can tend to skew around on me a little bit um, I remember so I'm outside of Philadelphia and I remember remember um, when I was in college, um, there was a big printmaking project and they had a steamroller that went down Broad Street and made prints that way. Um, some people I know use their cars, whatever. You gotta just transfer the ink on to, from your, a printing plate onto a piece of paper or whatever you're printing on. The nice thing is we have options. All right, so because I'm using mulberry paper, you can see right through the paper, which is really kind of nice. I'm gonna pull it up. I've gotten all over and voila. I'm really happy with this. I can't wait to see how this looks on a piece of paper that I primed last night. So you saw how I put the paper down on top of the printing plate. I know some people will do the opposite there's something for everybody. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a piece that I started last night. All right, so last night I was working on a piece of paper. Um, I did a painting and then I spray painted around some plants in my yard. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna make a print onto here. Um, but I'm gonna do the reverse rather than putting the paper down on top, I'm gonna to put this down on top, okay? So, um, for every print that I make, I'm gonna re-ink it. Getting past the slidey stage, into the micro dot stage, These inks are going to take a few days to dry. Uh, this ink is going to take a few days to dry because this is the professional water miscible oil. Um, I like the richness of the black, um, but it is going to take a little while to dry because it's an oil based ink. Right? So oils take a while. All right, so how do I want to do this? I had this vision like last night of how I was going to do this, and now I'm like second guessing myself. So this is the top, and I'm just going to stick this down where I want it. I think I want it there, okay? And for this, I'm going to use this to kind of apply some pressure. So the next phase for this piece, and if you follow me on Instagram, you'll be able to see the finished product once I post it up there. Um, for this one, I had this idea that I was going to incorporate some of my um, photo silk screens and then have the, the gate kind of like blending into that a little bit. So um, so that's, that's my plan for that one. Um, so let me show you the other inks real quick. Um, so, oh, one little thing about taking care of your brayers. So I, I always use the soft rubber brayer um, because it absorbs the ink really well. I have a couple of hard rubber brayers too. This one's kind of nice because you can pop, 
and pop it out <laughs> if it wasn't so coated with ink and stuff you could pop this out and replace it and there's like a set that you can have with um three different kinds of brayers like the soft rubber the hard rubber and then there's a like a plastic a clear plastic one that can be used for gluing and application and um that that's kind of cool um but the, so I usually will use the soft rubber because it's really, it, it absorbs the ink really nicely and it's pretty easy cleanup. Um, but storing your brayer, I'm real picky about this. Always store it like this uh, if you're just kind of laying it down on the table because um, eventually if you, if you keep it like this, um, eventually over time because it's soft rubber, it can create these like little edges and angles on your, um, on your brayer, which is not as nice. Um, so there's this really awesome press behind me and I wanna show you how I use it because that's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a proof press, so it would have been used um, for type to be, um, it would have been used uh, for, for, you know, the in a newspaper, they would have set the type and put it in a chase and then they would have put, um, they would have run a print to see if there were any misspellings and stuff like that. Um, so it's it's got a nice big flat bed for me to um, set whatever type I'm trying to do or whatever print I'm trying to do. So what I have in the press right now is one of those um, linoleum blocks, the mounted linoleum on a piece of, that's that's mounted on this block of wood. Um, and because this press is just a little higher than type high, I have a piece of matte board in the press bed inside the chase. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just ink this guy up and show you how I pull a print using the big press. So I'm going to use my oil-based, water miscible oil ink to do this. And I'm just going to ink it up. Okay. Then I'm going to take a piece of mulberry paper. And I mean, I can print on really any type of paper. And then because I know this press, I'm gonna put a piece of mat board down as packing, which just kind of fills that gap a little bit more. And so then there's that. Um, which I'm very happy with. All right, now I wanted to show you what some of the other inks do. So um, I'm not gonna show you this, the fabric inks because there's a really great tutorial by Lino Cave, and, um, I, but essentially what's really nice about these is these can be used for fabric or paper. They're a little more transparent um, straight from the jar, which air straight from the tube. Um, which you can use uh, to, you know, do different layers and transparencies. Uh, one thing I have, one little helpful hint I have found with these is you want to kind of massage them a little bit because sometimes if they've been sitting in, like in an art supply store or whatever, um, the, the pigment, they're so highly pigmented that the pigment separates from the binder and sometimes you might get like a little bit of like an oil out. And so that just means like, give it a little massage like this. Before you start inking. Um, but I wanted to show you these inks, um, which I use with, my, like I said I, uh, before, I use with my students. And I wanted to show you a really fun little technique called rainbow roll. Um, so you've been seeing me print straight one color, which is totally an option. Um, but you can also print two colors at the same time. So um, again, you know, because they're so highly pigmented, I'm going to kind of give it a little massage in the tube before I start squirting it out. And I'm going to do a little, oop, and a little massage, massage, massage. The red especially tends to be really thick. And a little blurp. And so I'm going to take another soft rubber brayer and I'm going to, um, now again, so these are not for fabric. These are for paper or for wood or for anything that is, um, 
not going to be worn because water does dissolve this ink. Um, so, I mean, there have been a couple of pieces that I've done um, where I've used these inks and then after they were dry, sprayed them with a little bit of water to create sort of a, like a foggy effect. Um, so, you know, if these get wet after they've dried, they can still start to run a little bit. It's treated almost like, like watercolor. Okay. These, once they're on there, they're on there permanently. Um, the only trick is again, if you, if I'm saying it twice, um, these will um, cure over the course of a week on fabric. So if you print something using these, let it sit for a week and then you can launder it. And you don't even need to heat set it. So if there are any screen printers out there, that's kind of fun, right? Um, so I'm gonna just take my brayer. I'm gonna go up to the glops, but not right through them. And I'm gonna start to pull down the ink. And if you notice, um, see how I'm like lifting up my hand? The reason I'm doing that is because I'm sort of getting the brayer to spin a little bit more um, while it's while it's in the air. All right, so rainbow roll is kind of fun because you can do two colors at once and then you can get sort of this rainbow effect on the inside of the, where those two colors are. Now I'm not gonna use any of the blocks that you've seen me print from yet. So I'm not gonna use this one because I need to clean it off um, using soap and water or a baby wipe or something like that. I need to clean this off. This is not gonna work because oil and water don't mix. This is this is water soluble. This is, um, this is water miscible, right? So oil and water won't mix. This is not gonna stick. Um, but I do have this little friend, so I'm gonna put ink out here. Um, so I'm just gonna roll out my ink. Okay, again, remember the first time you pull a print, it's gonna probably be a little bit light. So we'll see how this turns out. All right. I'm gonna grab that. And again, here's where you get to make a choice as a printmaker, whatever system works best for you. Baron, Brayer, Manos. Any type of paper will work for this process, by the way. Doesn't have to be specially designed printmaking paper. Um, you know, if you know anything about different kinds of papers, does not have to be acid free. Although, you know, like if you're thinking about longevity and you want this to stay nice and you want to be able to see this print for the next, you know, 50, 60 years, then make sure that you go for an acid free paper. But really, anything will work. And here you go. You're going to see this before I will. <laughs> That actually turned out pretty well. All right, and so I could keep on inking that up. Now the beauty of all of this is it's super easy cleanup. Um, just a little bit of water and a rag. And you can see how easily that is just coming right off. I would not go over to your sink and submerge this these blocks. Um, they're not designed to be completely wet like that. If you treat it like you would a cutting board, um, like a wooden cutting board in your house, then that's kind of the same effect. All right, so super easy cleanup, super fun to do, super fun to do for all ages. Happy printmaking, have fun. Talk to you soon, thanks. And thanks for tuning in.